numbers and counting until voters head to the polls in the November election. We're in the final stretch, and the candidates are fighting for every last vote. Tonight, we spoke with all the major players in Nebraska's races. And KATV News Watch Simmons' Adrian Whitsett is live with tonight's Commitment 2014 coverage. Adrian? Oh, uh, you probably see more political ads at this point than you can count, and you're looking forward to 8 o'clock Tuesday night and the end of this highly contested political season. Well, that is still a long ways away for those working tirelessly to get your vote and their supporters. Our mission tonight between the rally cries, this is a really close election, and the never ending phone calls, Tuesday can't come fast enough for candidates who've spent months on the campaign trail. Like Ben Sass, he says he's done sleeping on his tour bus. He spent part of Sunday in South Omaha attending a pro-life rally with Lee Terry and Pete Ricketts. We're having a great time. We're working hard, uh, mostly now transitioning to just encouraging our volunteers and thanking them for all they're doing to get out the vote. Dave Domina, who used Saturday's Husker halftime to rally votes, fundraised Sunday before heading to Lincoln to encourage his volunteers. He thinks the nation is in for a surprise Tuesday. Uh, you know the independents in this race make it interesting. My opponent's failure to show up is taking a dramatic toll, and we think the people of Nebraska are going to send a strong voice to D.C. In one of his Omaha campaign offices, Democrat Chuck Hassebrook called asking for support Tuesday. He and his 6,000 volunteers across the state. Nebraskans aren't for sale. Um, and they also don't blindly follow any political party. Nebraskans have an independent streak. Um, they can't be bought. Um, and they still vote for the person. With Republicans again Sunday night, Pete Ricketts helped to enthuse supporters once more, telling them to vote 10 times by encouraging nine others to head to the polls. It's getting close to election day, and people have seen all the advertisements. Now we need the grassroots folks to go out and talk to their friends and family, their co workers, their neighbors, and say, hey, you need to vote for Pete Ricketts. Well, we can see one of the highest midterm turnouts this year at the polls, and the candidates are ready to see those returns come back Tuesday night, each of them hoping they swayed enough of the independent and undecided vote to come their way. Back to you. All right, Adrian, thanks. Of course, the other hot race is for the House. District 2 incumbent Lee Terry hopes to hold off Brad Ashford, and he hopes to do what no one has done in 16 years. Ashford believes there will be a new dawn, while Terry feels he has the momentum. Well, I really feel the momentum when I'm out there knocking on doors and talking to people. It seems like in the last two weeks, it's, it went from flat to just like a hockey stick right up. Um, so I'm really enthusiastic about Tuesday. What we're hearing is that uh, the people in this district are looking for a change. Um, and, you know, uh, our message is that we're going to bring change. And, uh, uh, but certainly, you know, it's a, it's a tight race. And new at 10:30, we're going to take a look at one of the hot races in western Iowa. Well, Douglas County predicts a 46% voter turnout on election day, 47% in Sarpy County, and the feds will also be at the polls. U.S. Attorney's Office and Justice Department have a hotline to handle any complaints. The number is 402-493-8688. If you're still deciding who to vote for, head to KETV.com. We have posted all of our candidate profiles, and you can hear them in their own words on our politics page.